They were, I would say, almost two to even arguably three years ahead of everyone. And it's not easy in the chip landscape to catch up when someone has that kind of a lead. Um, they have actually uh, aggressively gone out and out innovate their peers. Before they were on a 18 to 24 month product cycle. Now they are on a 12 month product cycle. So they just keep staying ahead of their competition. Their competition is trying to catch up. AMD has made significant progress and now is uh, another second viable alternative in the market. Hence you see that in their significant growth as well. But we don't think at this point there is anyone else who can rival the total system TCO wow. and performance that they have. I was mentioning earlier that NVIDIA gets about 40% of its revenue from the big four players, Microsoft, Meta, Alphabet, and Amazon. What kind of risk is that, if any? I mean, there have been concerns around it. So there's two good data points that came out of this print. One, that concentration did reduce for the very first time. And what we liked it, it, it was not reduced because the cloud guys slowed their purchasing. In fact, those top four guys are expected to increase their CapEx spend by 45% this year. Wow. And they are all lined up to purchase its newest Blackwell products. But what was good was that the, the share was taken by strong enterprise demand, which we really like because that is much more diversified and sticky. Kunjan, let's say I'm at Amazon and I buy one of NVIDIA's chips. When do I have to replace it? Good like, question. Um, there, there's two answers to it. If we were in a normal uh, sector semiconductor cycle, like you are in smartphones or PCs, the refresh uh, time would be longer. So I would say uh, I, on a, ideally three to five years. But what's going on right now is all of these customers are just racing against each other. So they cannot afford to stop. So as soon as a newer, better chip is available that they can change, they are going to change. Um, what would stop all this? Like, we know that AI is going to grow. We know that there will be demand for chips. We know all that. That's a structural shift uh, within the economy. But what makes it cyclical? I think uh, the first point of cyclicality would be when the demand momentum stops, which we haven't seen no signs of. Look, the supply keeps on coming up. So at some point, demand is... the going to be meeting supply and after that if we see any kind of weakness in demand look look if the largest cloud providers don't see return on their investment don't see monetization benefit don't see their earnings and revenue grow from these investments that's when we can start worrying about sort of a cyclical downturn all right so how else in your universe of semiconductors how else do you, do you play this trend um, look, it's still, NVIDIA still remains sort of the best pure play AI play in semiconductors. So I don't know why you would want to look elsewhere, but if you were forced to, um, we also like, uh, you know, players like Broadcom and Marvell when it comes to AI networking, when it comes to the ASIC uh, chips, which NVIDIA's largest customers are designing themselves. So these are the two areas where we see significant growth coming in over the next two years.